What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Trill Pod. I'm John J. II here, joined with Kyle McCarthy, short film producer and uh, content creator. Kyle, how you doing, man? Tell me a little Good. bit about yourself and uh, yeah, how you doing? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, my name is Kyle. I make short films. Uh, I go by Kyle Make Short Films on Instagram and TikTok. And, um, you know, I have been making short films for the last like decade of my life. And when like TikTok and Instagram came around, it was kind of like a unique opportunity where I'd been kind of making things and putting on Vimeo and YouTube, but um, things started really taking off once I started making stuff for TikTok and kind of like right time, right place um, where like the kinds of mixed media animations I make or storytelling videos uh, seem to do well on there. And so, yeah, I guess that's what brought me onto here. <laughs> you found my work on Instagram. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. You know, and I, and, and I mentioned it earlier in the pre-show where it's like you're doom scrolling, you're just kind of looking through stuff and then you'll, you, you'll see something like, wow, that caught my eye, you know, and I, <laughs> that, I really appreciated that, uh, you know, and it was one of your, one of your films, one of your shorts. And I uh, just saw your one today about, uh, you know, how you're talking about the, the Chipotle nook. And, and it's so <laughs> funny because I, I know of a Chipotle near me where they have a Chipotle nook where it's like, okay, if you want to get away from everybody, you don't really want to talk to anybody. You have that nook to your, to your ability to use. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about that, how you got to that. Cause it's like, uh, I mean, it's, they're just so original and that was, that's just one of them. Wow. But uh, tell me a little bit about how you got to making that one about the Chipotle nook in, uh, yeah. in and of itself. Yeah. You know, it's funny, like just like a video like that is sometimes I like to use my, you know, Instagram or TikTok to like just kind of like a, a video journal of where I'm at in my life right now. And um, it can feel kind of silly sometimes to like put out something vulnerable, like just eating alone at a, at a Chipotle and, and how that led me to like having all these thoughts about where I'm at in my life right now. And um you know, all the change that's happening in my life. Uh, but it's, it's cool when I'm able to, I find like storytelling videos or um, just kind of help me process where I'm at in my life. And like, it's a nice little digital, like, uh, yeah, journal. Um. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it's, that's what it looks like. And that's what it is. And I can definitely see, I can see by your growing following, you know, just your little over 30,000 followers on Instagram right now. That's huge. That's big time. And you're growing. <laughs> it's going to grow ex exponentially. I feel I have a feeling it's going to grow very quickly for you very fast. Um, and you know, yeah, of course, man. And, and I appreciate your humble attitude and uh, towards it. You're, you're passionate about your, about your craft. And that's what people are looking for. People are looking for people like that, that are out there trying to, tell their story, but doing it in a way that's very relatable. And, and obviously that sounds, that might sound cliche, but if you do it in a way that uh, it strikes, you know, the heartstrings or it strikes a chord with somebody and what they're going through in their own life. I mean, that could, that can really have an effect as I'm sure, you know. Thanks. Yeah. That's the whole goal is to like make videos that are vulnerable and honest. And um, you know, like when I first started uh, making stuff on TikTok. So like TikTok's where I first like kind of grew an audience for my my work. I um and I was originally just making like mixed media animations on there. And then when I found that when I combined the animations with storytelling it was like the real sweet spot. And and then there are a couple like really important stories in my life that I would make videos on TikTok and they would blow up and they'd get like a lot of views. And it's really cool to see like these stories that are really important to me connect and resonate with other people. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's surreal. It's a very cool experience. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. So how, how, so tell me a little bit about where you started from. Obviously you told me a little bit, um, but who really inspired you, if anybody, just to kind of, and you mix, mentioned mixing the mixed media with, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the filming and, and talking about the, the stories, but who else has inspired you to do what you're doing it might just be someone in your in your family. It might not even be someone else that's a content creator. But uh, I guess what gave you that that push to want to start doing it? Maybe this could have been way before TikTok, way before <laughs> shorts were a thing and doom scrolling was a conversation piece. <laughs> where, where did you get your start and where did you get your original inspirations? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always loved filmmaking. I've always, like, I used to be a skateboarder and, and loved filming my friends skateboarding and making skate videos as a kid. And then... um it, 
after college, I went to grad school to be a teacher. That was like, I was on the path towards education. And while I was finishing up my uh, master's, my home was wrecked by Hurricane Sandy. And I happened to just have my camera with me the whole time. And it was kind of like this comfort, like, like it helps me experience this kind of surreal thing that was happening. But like some reason, like documenting it made me feel like, like a little bit removed from it you know like i have to capture how crazy this is and not like oh my gosh like my house just got wrecked by hurricane sandy and yeah. um but it was this real turning point where i was like life is too short not to be doing what you love to do and i love making films i love making short films and i i kind of decided to not go towards education and then try to be instead of filmmaker and i kind of very much like learn trial by fire over the last decade doing every kind of film project anything from like you know wedding videography to advertisements to like local ads like all these different things and kind of figured out what was that sweet spot that i like to do um and for a while it was just making like short films and documentaries um but then the pandemic happened and it was like a time where you know, I couldn't go out and actually film with friends. And so I started to um, cu- cut out old magazines and make mixed media animations, like just based on, you know, using these, I kind of taught, self-taught myself how to make animations. <laughs> and um, weirdly enough, it just was like perfect timing where like when TikTok came out and everyone's like, you know, you have to be niche as possible, like lean into your niche. <laughs> I was like, well, I have this weird niche where I make, you know, uh, mixed media animations and people seem to dig it. And so that's like kind of really where I really found my voice. I think in the last couple of years is like the more I leaned into this kind of little, you know, unique thing that I just kind of fell into, which was mixed media animation. Yeah, the mixed media animation. I mean, you really don't see a ton of people doing that. Where especially, and like I said, if you do see it and, 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 you know, you don't see it too many people doing it very effectively to the point where it's really reaching an audience. Because I'll be honest, I'm not going on YouTube and looking up mixed media animations. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not doing it. But if I come across it and how the algorithms work and how, you know, Instagram reels work, TikTok, et cetera, lots, I mean, every platform has their own version of short films uh, nowadays. But to see that and to really appreciate it by not having it be something that I would search on a regular basis on a normal day, uh, that makes it even more, I appreciate it even that much more. Uh, And I'm sure other people can say the same. So I guess in that same breath, how do you think that the, you know, the wave of short films and the emphasis on short films, how has that Mm -hmm. changed content creation for you compared to, you know, obviously the 16 by nine classic YouTube video format. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from that, just the format of, you know, building a video, making a video that way. And alongside that, the reach, the yeah. reach that you're able to achieve through shorts. How has that changed what you're doing and, and how you do it? It's been wild because, you know, I was thinking about this today, actually, because I'm kind of glad that in that first decade of making things that no one was really watching it <laughs> because it allowed me to really hone in on my craft and you know there's nobody waiting on the next video I made so I would spend months and months on a short film and and really work on it and you know maybe 200 to 500 people would see it when it came out and that was like a big deal to me and then yeah. TikTok comes around and really like there was this especially in the early days of using TikTok like I joined around 2021 and it, you know there's still a little bit of wild, wild, like wild west energy in the sense of like some videos would just really explode. And it was just so cool to see like it democratized in that way with like, you know, it didn't matter how many followers you're at. If you just put something out and it was good, it had the potential to reach millions of people. And um, so it's just been wild to like now to like reflect on it. Like, you know, if you told me, a couple of years ago that I'd have videos that reached 6 million views, you know, 4 million views. I'd be like, that's, that's wild. That's crazy. And like, it just, it's, yeah, it's still surreal to me that, that like that reach, but then, you know, there's the downside of that also in that it's very much like a roller coaster. Like I thought once you make it, like once you get some viral videos, like you've made it and you've arrived and like, 
now every video you make will like get thousands and thousands of plays, but it's, it's still, you know, every video is judged on its own basis. And like, you know, sometimes things pop and sometimes they don't, you know? So it's definitely, it's learning to be okay with that kind of roller coaster ride. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So do you still experiment with, you know, I, I call it 16 by nine, a classic yeah. YouTube video, a classic, something that you'd watch uh, in a movie theater, that mm -hmm. format, do you still make films and videos of that effect or are you strictly only doing short films? Uh, <laughs> By the uh, you know up and yeah, down vertical. Uh, I yeah. feel like uh, most of the things I make recently have been vertical, you know, for Instagram or TikTok. But I, I am in the process of working on a documentary that's going to be back to the original, you know, horizontal format. Um, right and like I do, I find myself now that I've been making vertical videos for quite some time. I'm like kind of ready to go back into making some like more traditional short films and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Because I know like before they had Instagram Reels, uh, there were still short film makers out there mm -hmm. uh, and actually had the luxury of participating in a uh, in a short film uh, for a project at Michigan State when I went there. Um, and I think it was called I believe it was called The Call or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and I can send you the link to it after. But basically, yeah. I saw the whole production side of it behind the scenes and they had the lights, they had the, you know, people say on action and you know it was kind of like it was like we were filming something uh and i've never really experienced anything like that i was more or less a fill-in last second kind of guy it was about for a film that was going to be uh put out for film festivals and whatnot i was about a corrupt detective working with the deputy and and etc I, I won't i won't ruin it for you <laughs> but uh, i'll send it to you and i'll get some uh hopefully I get some judgments on your on, on my acting skills but anyway oh, yeah, please it's just so cool to see how short films were a thing and then how especially short film makers now are taking mm -hmm. advantage of the real yeah. system of the Instagram or of the shorts, the YouTube shorts. And it's just, it's really cool to see that uh, and seeing people excel and people that do well at doing it. You, you can see, you can see evidently you don't have to watch the video for more than five, 10 seconds. And you're like, okay, this, this guy knows what he's doing or, okay, he's got some work to do, you know? So yeah. it's uh it's obviously a roller coaster. There's uh there's trials, there's trial and error for everything, and uh, it's cool to see. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. You went through that phase of trial and error, trial by fire, and kind of say, yeah. okay, well, this doesn't work. I, I have time to, to, to work on my craft, and, and now it's a polished uh, masterpiece. Yeah. And I'm sure it's always improving. Yeah. I'm sure it's always improving, but uh, it's, it's better than where it was, uh, and that's the important thing. So what are your goals as far as short filmmaking? What is the audience that you are trying to reach? How do you, you know, how do you strive to achieve that audience every single day in your, in your marketing, in your content itself? Um, yeah. Uh, how do you, how do you work through that? I think the ultimate goal is to just keep on making short films and hopefully I'd like to get back more into like the traditional space of like, um, making short films that get into film festivals and things like that. And um, like, it's weird. Like I, I used to kind of really dream out what I wanted in terms of like, I want to, you know, direct a feature film by the time I'm 35 and uh, get into Sundance and get South by Southwest. Like I had these like big kind of lofty dreams, but then like, you know, in that dream, I never could have imagined that something like TikTok or reels would come about, you know? So like, now I'm just more excited for like that. I don't know what the path will kind of be, you know, like that. Um, I just, I want to keep on making things. I like need to make videos and, and it's just, it's a passion of mine. So I just kind of hope that I keep on uh, getting the opportunity to make cool things. You know, uh, I've had some opportunities to work with cool brands and stuff like that. So it'd be cool to continue to make some like, you know, make mixed media animations for, really cool companies and things like that that'd be cool <laughs> definitely we might see you on a super bowl commercial someday <laughs> yeah, you never know, know. <laughs> hey i mean with the power of social media power of connecting and networking with people that are not in your geographical location that is it's next level and it's just how much are you going to take advantage of that how much is anyone going to take advantage of that because it's something that's there but i think because people don't have to work so hard to network anymore it can be almost one of those things where it gets redundant it's like oh man i don't have to worry about that i can just i can just 
you know, shoot them a DM on Instagram and I don't really have to work for it. Uh, where before you didn't have any, anything like that, you had to actually travel or make a call and you really yeah. had to work your tail off to, to get a hold of certain people if you wanted to have opportunities. Um, but I think those, those opportunities are still, uh, they're still sought after because you still have to get, and I say, get off your butt and do it. Uh, it, and I mean, in real, in reality, it's getting on your phone and doing it and really pushing hard, but you know, pushing the content out there, doing something, get content out there. If you're trying to become a content creator, and I'm sure you could give advice to everyone out there that might be trying to do something similar, get the content out there. Cause the more you think about it, days go by, years go by, uh, and, and your life will pass you by where it's like, okay, I wish I would have done that when I was in my twenties yeah. or when I was in my thirties and you know, time can pass you by and you don't have that opportunity anymore. Uh, so I guess what advice would you give to other content creators out there, uh, that might be striving to push their craft, push what they're doing out there, become artists, uh, connect with people online. How would you, what, what, what advice would you give those people? I guess my best advice is to just try to figure out what is your unique perspective on things and like lean into that, you know, because everyone's trying to replicate each other and do like hop on trends and stuff like that. But, you know, that, that's all very fleeting. And so if you can figure out a style or something that's unique about you and uh, just really lean into that and like keep working at it until like, you know, eventually you'll find an audience for your work. If, if you're doing something that's unique to you and is authentic, you know, that's, that's what I'd encourage. Um, don't try to like replicate <laughs> what what's the cool trend of this week, you know, focus on trying to do things that is kind of has more longevity um, because there will be those ebbs and flows uh, and you, you could sustain those ebb and flows better if you have like something unique to bring to the table, you know? Definitely. Definitely. That's good. You mentioned a work trip that you have coming up uh, and I might've saw it in your, in your uh, recent video, your recent video on Instagram, but I, I think that's a hint to another work trip that you mentioned in the pre-show can you tell us a little bit about that and, and and if you're looking forward to it what you're looking to accomplish uh and just you know your expectations of it all yeah well this week i'm going to chicago for uh for for work but um after i get back i uh am flying down to puerto rico <laughs> with my family I, i'm married and have three kids and we're oh wow uh, good for you thanks <laughs> and we're three boys and we're uh moving down to Puerto Rico for a year, which is a big adventure. Um, my in-laws live down there and um, we're hoping to be settling down in um, kind of close to them. And uh, it's really going to be just kind of like a year of um, hopefully like kind of like a, a pause year. Like we live in New York and um, we've been feeling like eventually – like the town we live in, uh, it's gotten very expensive to live here. And so we feel like eventually we need to figure out where's the next place that we want to end up. And so this is like kind of a pause year to kind of reflect on that and figure out like where's the next place we're supposed to go. Um, but I think it'd be really cool to be down there and film stuff. Um, it's a beautiful oh, yeah. island. And um, we're hoping to go down there for a year is the plan right now. But We'll see. <laughs> hey, whatever. And it's also in kind of mentioned what you said earlier, taking pride in the unknown, taking pride in not knowing what comes around the corner uh, and just living for right now, but also doing what you can to prepare and, and set yourself up for, for the best opportunities that are around the corner that might, you might not be able to see them right now, but if you can prepare for them and do the right things right now, you're going to be glad that you did those things once you do get to, you know, around the bend. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess what would you say to that effect of taking pride in the unknown and just kind of, you know, living for today, but setting yourself up and, and putting yourself in the on the best foot to to take on what's around the corner? I, it's funny because I'm someone who has a lot of anxiety about, you know, the future. I'm always like overwhelmed um, at the idea of it. But I I think it is when it comes to being a creative person if you can be excited for the fact that like you like have goals of what you want to accomplish, but know that there's going to be lots of twists and turns and you probably won't end up in the spot you want, but like the spot you find, it will be even better. You know, like that's um, I think of just looking at 
where I'm at right now. And if you told, you know, the version of me from like five years ago that I'd be doing like X, Y, and Z, um, I'd be like so excited about it, you know? And like, if you could just remind yourself of that, like the cool things that you're getting to do right now in this moment, um, like would your younger version of yourself be proud of that and um, excited for those opportunities that you're getting, you know, like that's what it's all about. Because like things like, you know, views or stats, those things are all like temporary, but you know, like it's, it's about remembering like, yes, having that, that fire to like want to keep on making things, but being able to reflect on, on all the cool things going on right at this moment. Definitely. Definitely. I guess what, what else would you tell content creators out there that might be getting burnout out by not getting as many views as they want uh, or, or not achieving the amount of success that they are? Um, and I think you touched on it a little bit, but what would you tell them, uh, as far as, you know, pushing forward, keep going. Um, and I'll let you, I'll let you take it up, take it from there. Yeah. I think it's important for content creators to like not put too much, um, don't let the algorithm decide your worth, you know? And so like, Algorithms are, are often glitchy and unpredictable. I've had videos that I've made that, you know, first time I put them out, got a couple thousand views and then posted it four or five different times over a year. And one of the videos got 4.2 million views eventually, you know? And really? So like, the same yeah, video? Yeah, the same video. No and kidding. It posted four or five different times. And then the last time it got 4.2 million. And it's just, sometimes it's just the right time. So if you believe in the art that you're making, um, don't like if you're not seeing like immediate results don't think that that means that your art's bad and and you know sometimes it just might be the the right time like right place like i for if, if i could give a little like um life hack for anyone who's creating stuff on the internet if you have a um like write down videos that you feel are like really good that you made that when you put it out there like failed like flopped like and save that like in a journal and then if you ever have a video go viral immediately reshare those videos because sometimes like that's what happened with me like i had a video that was taken off and i was like oh let me repost that video that i thought should have done better and that video that I reposted got 4.2 million plays and it's like oh really it, and i always knew it was good video i didn't like i never stopped believing in it so like it's just Sometimes it's just the right time. It's all about timing, you know? So. Yeah, and it's so interesting too because you mentioned the algorithm and, and finding you're almost like you're you're jumping in a line, a big line. Or uh, if, you, if you watch Finding Nemo, that big current <laughs> that I jumped through, you know, you're jumping in that current uh, and one takes off. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's fish the rest of these through that current, you know, and kind of, you know, play with that algorithm a little bit and try to use it to your advantage, especially if those videos didn't take off or, yeah. or whatever, because a lot of times it's all about the reach. It's like, I know this is a good product. Mm -hmm. I know people like stuff that's like this. Uh, and, and, and this is something that has worked before, but you just might not be getting that reach that you could yeah. be getting. Uh, so I right. mean, finding little loopholes like that is, is super huge. Yeah. And that's why I always get frustrated when I see like big, content creators or TikTok gurus say like the algorithm equals people. They're like, it's just, if your videos aren't doing well, it's because the audience just doesn't like it. And I think that could be kind of destructive sometimes for artists and creative people, because sometimes it's that sometimes you're making crappy <laughs> things, but sometimes it's just, it's just not like your time, you know, but there will be a time, you know, just, you just have to be ready for it. Right. Be patient and also be, somebody that's constantly pushing content out, I guess, what would you put as, you know, what would, advice would you give everybody just kind of telling about your story at the same time, but just the importance of not becoming stagnant, not becoming comfortable, but continuing the influx uh, or outflow rather of content that's, that's going out. You might, you might not be having immediate success for everybody uh, out there that's, that's making videos and doing their thing. But they might get burned out and say, you know what, this isn't working. I'm done. Yeah. I'm 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 gonna take a break. Where a lot of times they might not know how close they were. Yeah. You know. So I, what would you say about the importance of pushing content and, and and quantity, but also quality of quantity? Yeah, it's hard because I understand. I've had you know I've been doing this for a couple of years now, and, and I've seen a lot of people that are really promising creators just get burnt out and just leave and like 
haven't posted in a year or so. And I, I always wonder about them, what happened, but I think like, it's just one of those things where for me, my, my philosophy has always been to like, be okay with failing in public, like making things, putting it out there, not being a perfectionist about it, but learning based on like, you know, the more things you make, the more you, you, you like figure out what's your unique approach to that, to, to content creation, to, you know, videos. Um, and yeah, it's, it is like kind of a, a muscle with like video editing and stuff like that. Like the more you do it, the more better you get at like intuitively uh, cutting together a video. So I, I guess my advice is like, follow your own timeline. Like what if you, release things as like comfortable as you feel, but if you have something to say and you want to make things like, don't, don't let the fear of it not being perfect, like get in the way of, of putting it out to the world. You know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So obviously I reached out to you kind of through just scrolling through, uh, you know, reels one day, doom scrolling, I called it. And I think we're all, we've all been guilty of that once or twice. Maybe we're doom scrolling. We shouldn't be. Um, but I just want, I'm, I'm interested to know, so obviously we had our inter interaction, I commented on your video and then I DM'd you and whatnot. What are some of your, the other interactions? Because I'm sure other people have reached out. I'm sure other people have, you know, said, hey, you know, I love what you're doing. Or I guess, what are some of those other interactions like and, and what experiences have you had with, with other people that have viewed your content? Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's, it's a bit overwhelming, <laughs> to be honest. Like, um, I try to get back to people, but sometimes it's, it's, it could be hard with the DMS and everything. Um, and they always like, there's like the things that end up in the filtered request. And then there's like a hidden request. It's like, it, it could be a little bit much, but I, I do try to like respond to people I can in comments and things like that. And, um, I don't know. It means a lot to me when people like really connect with the art that I'm making and it has an impact on them. I try to not take that too lightly, you know, like it's really cool that, that, it, they connect my stories connect with other people, you know, definitely. Hey, you never know. I, I could be, I could be very right in my assumption. I'm, I'm assuming that I am, but someday it might be too much where you're like, Oh man, I can't respond to all these messages. You know what I mean? Some days and, and it hopefully is. you do get there. And like, I'm sure you have days like that now. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, it's funny. Yeah. Like when something goes viral, either on, on Instagram or on TikTok, there'll be those days where I just like, it could be a little too overwhelming, <laughs> but, uh, it's cool. It's, it's all things I'm grateful for. Definitely. Definitely. By all means. Well, cool. Well, I don't want to keep you up too much. Uh, is there any final words, final thoughts you want to give to the people, final plugs you want to give? Um, this is the end of the show and, uh, feel free to say whatever you want, give your piece and, uh, we'll put it out there. Yeah, no, just, uh, thanks for having me on. Um, my name is Kyle make short films on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. If you want to check out any of my work. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> good deal, good deal. Hey, thanks, Kyle, so much no for being problem. on. Make sure to check out our website, everybody, ginsportsnetwork.com, at ginsportsnetwork and at trillpod underscore on Instagram. Uh, and check us out. Check out Kyle's content. Kyle makes short films on Instagram, on TikTok, and uh, I'm guessing everywhere too, right? Yeah. Um, you can find I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find it. <laughs> So make sure to check out his stuff. A lot of great content on there. A lot of relatable things. Uh, and it's all original. So uh, I guarantee you, anyone listening, anyone watching this will love what Kyle has to, to produce to the world. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm John J. This second here with Kyle McCarthy.